Today we're going to do an acrylic painting. That's right. We're going to take a little trip through the woods. So come along and uh, watch me paint and I'll explain some of the stuff that I'm doing. Okay, we're gonna start, we're gonna put some, like a yellowy green down in the background there. This is gonna be our base, it's gonna be, uh, we'll say kinda like of the sun in the background, kinda just coming up and filtering through the trees. And yes, excuse the uh, out of focus here in the beginning, cause I was slinging paint. I guess some was splattering on the camera lens and it was focusing on that. <laughs> everything was a little bit out of focus I apologize now we're just laying down some basically some blocking in some green or some foliage for later a little bit different shade of green or a little bit closer lower foliage just kind of sketching out some things blocking in some color just to get some stuff onto the canvas The blocking stages usually just again to get something on the canvas cover up that white but you want to uh, use colors that are usually in the mid range of whatever you're gonna be painting that way you can go a little bit darker for shadows a little bit lighter for uh, accents and then even lighter for highlights so that's what this blocking stage is and it also lets you know uh, an idea of where you're where you're gonna go what you're gonna do but with any painting don't be afraid to change I know often I always go in with an idea and as I go along and things progress the uh, painting the canvas or the paints and everything just kind of takes you in a different direction sometimes now I'm going with kind of like a glaze like a grayish glazy over top of everything not like a really misty misty but like a haze we don't want anything crisp and clear it's kind of like a hazy early morning not like a sunrise the sun's up but it's, it's a little bit a little bit hazy we're gonna throw in some distant distant trees a bunch of tree trunks in the distance a bluey gray color and then as we get closer we get a little bit darker and darker and darker as we get closer to us that adds the depth that we need for this little woodland scene as with most paintings they all start out very rudimentary very simple and Sometimes I use the word juvenile, but it's just the basics. You're just slapping stuff down just to get that canvas covered and get ideas. And it's all about the layers and the layers and the detail as you go. Now we're going to take a, a muted green. We're going to get some indications of some, some tree foliage here and there. From this distant stuff. I'm using what they call a, a deer foot brush. It uh, leaves a bunch of little stippled, uh, instead of like a one big brush mark, it leaves a whole bunch of little ones. Uh, some people prefer fan brushes. Some people prefer other things. 
That's why I usually don't talk about brushes too much. It's a very, very personal thing. It's a personal preference. We're going to go ahead and haze this up a little bit more. A little bit of a, a gray wash. Real thin. Real light. Just to mute everything and sink it back and give it that misty, hazy look. I wanted to sink this background way back in the background. going to start with some uh, of that distant foliage and start working on that. That's the same brush actually. A little stipply effect. Still using the muted colors. Don't want to get it real saturated or that'll bring it way forward. So we want to keep it still bit muted. Going over and touching up some of those trees that uh, got washed out a little bit. Make them come back alive. We'll be adding some more closer ones. So you got a little bit darker than the rest of them. Starting to come forward closer to us. sitting in front of a window so <laughs> every once in a while I miss it but yeah the, uh, the sun will come creeping in through the window across the canvas Mixing all these different greens can be uh, a little bit rough at times, trying to get them all right. So that's kind of why I did this one, just to practice the different greens, saturated, desaturated, the muted tones, the yellow greens, the 
darker greens. Yeah, it's it can be a little bit tough. So we got to do something like this just to practice doing all this stuff. Between bushes, grass, trees, close trees, distant trees. Yeah, it can be a little bit crazy trying to figure out all these greens. Closer in your face, work on some of the bushes and other greenery. and then I'll go over with a little bit of a, a lighter shade and then I'll go back the third time. It's all about the layers to get these things. I'm working on this little grassy hill right here. I know a lot of people say, why do you paint it one color and then paint over it with another color? Well, it does. it's, it's part of that layering thing. It does help. The underpainting does show through some, depends on how you paint. Now we're going to throw a little downed log over here just to add some interest. But yeah, if you paint the, an underpainting and then you paint on top of it, the one you don't have to get really crazy with it because you already have your canvas covered. And if you painted that second color just on top of the white canvas or whatever, it wouldn't look the same. So it does add to the, the, uh, the depth and the saturation of everything. It's all about layer layering, 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 layering. Some things get three, four, five coats of different shades and highlights and midtones, and yeah, so you often cover up stuff that you did, you spent time on, and you just cover it up <laughs> with some bushes, or you throw a big tree in front of it. But yeah, that's it's all part of it. We're going to work on this down log and put a little bit of detail into it. So when I start putting in uh, the foliage around it, it's already done. So there will be leaves and stuff going over it and grass coming up in front of it. So I want to get the details up and out of the way before I start covering it up. It's a lot easier to do all this little detail and cover it up than it is to uh, have stuff in front of it trying to go around it, behind it, and yeah. So yeah, you do cover a lot of your work up sometimes, but hey, it's not a biggie. some of the bushes and weeds and greenery giving it some uh, 
some life, some color. Let you know that the sun is making it through and you can see it. See, this is the what third third shade third third color of green on these uh, little branches or leaves and it doesn't show up as well on camera but when you look at the actual painting in person and when it's in your hand and in your face you can see all the layers you can see the depth Attention to the grass on both sides of the little path. Put in the little the little dark spots, the shadows, those little uh, areas that get shadow between clumps of grass and things. attention to the to the trees detail them out a little bit see this you know when you see me jumping around it's because i'm giving some areas time to dry so i'm not painting wet on wet so i can uh, go ahead and actually go ahead and do a uh, another layer on top so i'll move around to this and that give things a chance to dry and then i'll get back to it and the bushes and 
things right along the path. Time to do some leaves. A whole bunch of leaves. <laughs> here and work on some little bushes right here on top of this little hill kind of in front of the tree that's just behind it those bigger branches kind of make it a brighter more saturated color so it pops forward just a little bit so you can tell that it's not part of the tree but it's a separate bush and go over here and hit some of these little leaves on this spiny stuff with a little highlight here and there to make some jump out. Now we're going to work on some grasses again. Now you can see where those little darker areas that I put in earlier, see how they come into play, make it look like little clumps and not so, you don't want it to look like a manicured lawn because after all it is out here in the woods. So you need those little dark areas, those little voids, shadows. fan brush and some indications of grass pop it in some highlights on other things here and there impatient hit it with the hair dryer <laughs> I do that once in a while sometimes I do something I don't like it so I just paint over it and start over again happens quite often more often than I'd like to admit but hey Ready to 
establishing some of those dark areas I kind of covered up. Again, don't be afraid to change. Don't get stuck in your head where I want it to be like this. Roll with it. this real long, long grass, weeds and whatever. jump ahead that's what it came out to be gonna kind of touch up the path we're about uh about done with this one so there you go nice little little woodland scene looks like a nice place to uh Ride a bike or something through. Nice little biking path or something through the woods. The sun's up and shining through kind of like a hazy little wooded area into a clearing. Again, it's not the greatest one, but uh, it was a, a green a lesson for me practice I guess you could say so many different greens trying to get that worked out and that's the only way you, that I know how to do it is just do it keep doing it over and over again mix it try it that way the next one will even look better you know, I'm just plunked around some, some leaves don't want to get too crazy but yeah so there it is hope you enjoyed this one I had fun doing it it's always a challenge again all these greens man it can get to you but practice 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 think about what you're doing use some of the basics and you can get through it too what we do here is go back 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 back